Miss Mr. Malik H. B. Jallo. I am a, I am a lawyer by profession, um, and more specifically, I'm the lawyer for Nyan Saran Jo, not Nyan Saran Jai, but Nyan Saran Jo. Um, you will recall that Nyan Saran Jo was one of the victims of the unfortunate and rather deplorable Deida, Deida Hydera incident. Um, specifically, she was shot on the leg and, and continues to suffer excruciating pain uh, and also very, very strong physical and psychological distress as a result of the ordeal that she actually went through. Um, like all victims, she wants redress. Like all victims, she wants justice. Like all victims, she wants to be compensated. Um, so over the years, she had explored avenues, reasonable avenues that she thought could actually avail her that opportunity to, to get the redress that she's actually looking for. Um, unfortunately, to date, we have, not been, we have not been very, very successful. Um, the challenges and the constraints that we've all faced in making sure that the perpetrators of the Deida Hydra incident um, were actually brought to book under the previous government is well documented. Is well documented. However, with the change of government and with the coming into being of what we call the new Gambia, um, there was renewed optimism that uh, Nyang could eventually get the justice that she has been looking for and that Nyang could eventually get the compensation that she has actually been, been looking for. Um, to that end, what she did was to reach out to the government through the Attorney General um, to seek redress, to seek compensation. Um, but however, this has not been successful. Uh, we regret to, to report. This has not been successful. Um, all we got was uh, a rather vague um, pledge from the Office of the Attorney General that uh, they're working on building something or they're working on carving out something for all victims, including Nyan herself. Um, considerable time has elapsed since that, that pledge was made, and nothing is still forthcoming. So therefore, as a victim, she has deemed it necessary to instruct me as a lawyer to actually initiate legal action against the government of the Gambia uh, to seek compensation, to seek redress, for the harm that she has actually suffered. I would like to clarify that this is not an affront. It's not a confrontational posture that she is taking against the government of the Gambia. In fact, you would agree with me that um, the transaction that led to her suffering harm as a victim uh, was not actually the making of this government. It did not happen under the watch of this government. But as we always say, there is only one government of the Gambia. So rightly or wrongly, the liabilities and the responsibilities that are left behind by the previous government, uh, in one way or the other, have to be settled and sorted out by the present government. Um, and the judicial process that he's also going to be commencing uh, is not stating that the government of the Gambia is to blame for what was actually done to her. Uh, all that it is saying is that because the government of the Gambia has now made a public commitment and pronouncement that it is going to compensate some of the victims of the Deida Hydera incident, we thought it is important and imperative that if you're going to compensate victims uh, emanating from the same transaction, it is not correct and it is not in the best interest of the victims to compensate some and then leave out the others. So this is what we are saying. Nyang was part of a transaction, and this transaction led to harm being suffered by her and to by, by the late Daida Hydra, who unfortunately lost, her, lost his life, and also by another individual. So what we are saying now is that if the government of the Gambia has taken the position that it is going to compensate the family of the late Daida Hydra, for example, that is well and good. We are not opposed to that. In fact, our fervent desire and commitment is to see justice, redress, and compensation for all deserving victims. So we are not really averse to that. All we are saying is that it is equally important 
that the same goodwill is extended to Nyan because she was part of the same transaction. They were all victims. And in fact, the irony is that, yes, the family of the late Daida Hydra, they are victims, and no one can dispute that. But Nyan is probably a more deserving victim, if I could say that, because Nyan is a direct victim. In international humanitarian law, we have a classification wherein victims can be classified as either direct or indirect. So to compensate the families of a direct victim, the families that you are compensating, they, they're deserving of compensation, but they're indirect victims. So if you're compensating an indirect victim, whereas the direct victim is left uncompensated, then that is, that is uh, potentially counterproductive, and it can it inadvertently occasion what we call secondary victimization. Because I would like to think that the dominant objective and the overriding objective of the process is to provide compensation to all deserving victims, but also to serve the best interests of the victims. So it is not helpful uh, to, to, to select, so to speak, uh, who to compensate and who not to compensate, especially when those victims all belong to the same transaction. In other words, they are all victims of the same transaction. So this is a position that we have taken, and this is a position that we believe is reasonable uh, in that um, it is our view and it is our opinion, considered opinion, that the decision to compensate some of the victims of the Daida Hydra incident and leave out a victim like Nyan, for example, is potentially discriminatory. And this is in violation of the fundamental rights and freedoms enshrined in the 1997 Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia. So this is the position that we have taken. We are not saying that the family of the late Daida Haidara do not deserve to be compensated. We are not saying that they should not be compensated. All we are saying is that compensating them is a welcome move, but it should not stop there. Nyan should be included. Nyan deserves to be included, and Nyan has the right to be compensated. This is our position. And this is what we are going to be arguing uh, at the High Court uh, uh, to ensure that Nyan gets uh, redress, to ensure that Nyan is compensated. So essentially, we are going to file a case against the government of the Gambia, and this case would be taken to the High Court. And what we are seeking is that the High Court compels the government of the Gambia to provide compensation for Nyan Saran Job, and to also find that the decision to compensate some of the victims of the dead are of the Daida Hydra incident and to leave out Nyan is discriminatory and is in violation of her rights, human rights essentially, as enshrined under the 1997 Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia. So this, this is our position and this is what we wanted to share this morning uh, with members of the legal, with members of the media fraternity because it's important. Um, I believe that this is probably uh, the first major uh, legal process initiated by a victim before the courts, before the courts here in the Gambia. So we thought since it's uh, almost like a novel situation, it is important that we properly brief the media and, and, and through them the public on what we are seeking to do and what is guiding us as far as uh, doing what we are actually doing. Um, it is important, especially in light of the fact that the TRRC is already um, operational now so some would be asking, why are you going to court? Why are you not waiting for the TRRC? I mean, we hasten to add that the TRRC is not a substitute to the, to the mainstream uh, uh, justice facility. And as far as moving the socioeconomic agenda of, of this country is concerned. So we're fully in support of the TRRC. But we hasten to add that it must not be misconstrued as a substitute for the mainstream justice sector. So this is, this is the statement that we had to deliver this morning. Uh, we will now open the floor for questions from members of the media fraternity, and then we'll do our best to, 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 to explain what, what needs to be explained. Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Can you speak up? Well, well yeah, thank you. With, with the money, I'm not going to give you a figure, unfortunately. But we're asking for adequate compensation. We're asking for adequate compensation. It's not so much about the money. It's about the recognition that she deserves to be given, formal recognition 
that one, she's a victim, that two, she has suffered harm, and that three, she deserves compensation and that she's going to get compensation. This is the overriding objective of the whole process. Um, you raise a very important issue about the ECOWAS court judgment. Yes, it is true that uh, the late Deda Haidara's case went to the ECOWAS court, and the ECOWAS court made an order. And we were one of the first people to congratulate the Gambia government for making the commitment to comply and to implement the judgment and the decision of the ECOWAS court. Um, so that is, that is highly welcome. But if you look at the judgment in itself, the court actually took judicial notice or judicial recognition of the fact that Nyang is a victim because she was mentioned throughout. Uh, so, so, so her name featured very strongly in that judgment, even though she was not a party, even though she was not a party, and the circumstances surrounding why she was not a party um, um, is well documented. Uh, this is a lady who, was, uh, who had to flee from a fairly hazardous environment, uh, from a fairly hostile environment. Um, she had to flee for her life and uh, went into exile in neighboring, 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 neighboring Senegal uh, for, for obvious reasons. So bringing a legal challenge against the government at that time was probably uh, not, not in her immediate contemplation, not in her immediate contemplation, but notwithstanding it was recognized in that case, it was recognized in that judgment that she was indeed uh, uh, a victim of the transaction and she was indeed one of the people with the late data Hydra and that she indeed uh, suffered a gun shot and as a result uh, the wounds also followed. Uh, uh, and I've said before that the said wounds continue to cause her excruciating pain and distress. And remember it's not just about the physical harm, but it's about the psychological impact also of going through such an ordeal um, that, that should also not be underestimated. That should also not be underestimated. So yes, we are going, I can't say how much we are looking for, but we are looking for two things. One, a finding that the decision to compensate some victims and to, and to leave her out is discriminatory, and then two, for adequate compensation to be given to her by the government. So this is the crux of what we are actually looking for. I agree with you. We would like to call on them to, to provide redress to all the victims who are deserving of redress. But as far as the formal court process is concerned, uh, we can only advocate for a victim who has approached us mm, for, for support. So as we speak, it's only Nyan. So if Ida had come forward and also requested to be included, we would have strongly considered that, 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 that possibility. Um, on the first question of, uh, I think you, you meant to say, if we go to court and there's a judgment and the government refuses to honor the judgment, is that what you meant to say? Yeah, well, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I would like to think that things have really changed now and that independence of the judiciary has been given a very strong impetus. Um, and I would be very, very disappointed and surprised if such a thing would happen. But like I said, I don't want to speculate at this stage. Let's take it one step after the other. If you do get a judgment and then something like that happens, then, then we'll cross the bridge when we get there. Yeah, yeah. Yes, gentlemen. You didn't say that money is not the issue. What I said, and I want, you, I want you to quote me very clearly, is that he asked for a figure. And I said, we're not going to give him a figure. All we're requesting for is adequate compensation. And I can't really see, I mean, uh, uh, how adequate compensation in this particular transaction can be achieved without some form of monetary award. Because essentially, what we are saying is there has to be parity. There has to be parity and there has to be consistency. So already we know that monies had been paid to other victims. So what we are saying is that you must also give something to her. The figure, we are not, we are not haggling about that. All we are asking the court to give is adequate, adequate, or to order for adequate compensation to be given to her. So money is an issue, but it's not the driving force behind this whole process. Hmm? No, I, I wouldn't want to be drawn into, into a figure, um, but, but we are going to ask for adequate compensation that is commensurate to what the other victims perhaps have received or have, uh, are going to receive ultimately. And that is commensurate to her standing as a direct as opposed to an indirect victim. Yes. I hope I've answered your question. Yes. Yes. At the beginning of how she came to be involved, Nyan Saran Job was one of the individuals with the late Daida Haidara. 
Yeah. What happened in that incident is well documented. I don't think you need a rocket scientist to tell you what really happened. It is, it is a matter of public notoriety. Um, so she was shot, essentially. This is the part that I believe is most relevant. She was shot on the leg, and as a result of that shooting, she su suffered very, very serious injuries. And those injuries continue to cause her excruciating pain and distress, not just physical. How soon we're going to file our court case? Very soon. In fact, we have, we have completed all the necessary formalities that need to be done in order for the case to be put before the courts. So we're looking at the not too distant future. Yes, yes. So it's going to happen very, very soon. Very, very soon. We're talking of a matter of days. Days are not weeks, not months or years. The other question is, um, uh, what was it again? The other question. Um, from listening to this, like the Gambia government has started compensating some people around the data in our case. Is it based on the judgment from a doorstop or has the Gambia government taken it upon itself to compensate the family of the data? Well, we don't have, we don't have, uh, we don't have any formal position on that. But I would like to think that it is in furtherance of the judgment from the ECOWAS court. But even if that is the case, what we're saying is the judgment at the ECOWAS court gave recognition to Nyan. Nyan was recognized as one of the victims of the whole incident. So she should not be excluded from getting compensation solely because she was not a party in that suit. This is a position that we have actually taken. Because even though it is a judgment by the ECOWAS court, and even though, for all intents and purposes, the monies that are being paid to the family of the Eda Haidara are in furtherance or in compliance with that judgment, that should not take away the fact that Nyan is a victim of the same transaction and that she's deserving of, of compensation. In fact, the circumstances that actually led to her not being a party in that suit before the ECOWAS court is well known. I mean, that was the list of her priorities. This was a lady who had just suffered a very horrific experience, um, and she had to flee for her life, uh, to go into exile, and with all the broader ramifications that living in exile come up with, uh, no job, no source of income, uh, living in hardship, etc., etc. So she really um, had other priorities at that stage. But that is not to say that she's not a victim, and that is not to say that she's not deserving of, of compensation. So what we're saying is, whether ECHO was caught or not, um, if you compensate some of the victims in the same transaction, then she also deserves to be compensated. This is our position, and it's a very strong position that we are going to prove when we get to the courts. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is, that is not our objective. Yes. Our objective is to strengthen and not to weaken the TRRC. And I don't think one of the purposes, in fact, why we convene this media briefing is to clarify issues pertaining uh, uh, especially to the relationship between the TRRC and the mainstream justice sector. Um, I don't think it is going to erode public confidence in the work that the TRRC is set up to do. Instead, I think it is going to better enlighten the public on the possible relationship between the TRRC and the mainstream justice sector. It is important that people know or that victims know the various options that are actually available to them to actually seek redress. It is not correct to give a victim the impression that uh, once the TRRC uh, is in motion, uh, no one else can go to court. No, that is not, that is not well founded. The courts are still there uh, as an option, as an option for victims where they think it is appropriate and where they think it is suited to their, to their, to their circumstances. So like I said in the beginning, the TRRC is not a substitute to the courts. It is here probably to complement. It can play a complementary role to the work that the courts do, and the courts equally can play a complementary role to the work that the TRRC is actually set up to do. What is important is accountability. What is important is to get redress, whether it's at the TRRC or at the courts, uh, should be immaterial. No, I think, I think this case is quite unique um, um, uh, in many respects. Um, I don't think we have had scenarios wherein uh, victims in collectivity of the same transaction have been in a situation wherein some of them are given something and others are not given anything. I think thus far what we have is that 
we have a large body of victims who are all uh, waiting, perhaps, for the TRRC to, to commence hearings, for them to come forward, uh, share their views and concerns, and ultimately seek redress. Um, I don't think, and I stand to be corrected if you know of any, I don't think there is a situation presently where you have victims belonging to the same transaction, and some of them are compensated formally, and others are not. So in that, in that, in that respect, Nyan's case is quite unique. It is quite unique, and uh, that danger of opening the floodgates, as, as you put it, um, perhaps is not, is not well founded as far as her, her own case is concerned, um, her own case is concerned. But also, uh, allied to the fact that we are seeking to give her redress, we are also seeking to give hope to victims, to show them that really there are concrete mechanisms that you can make recourse to, to seek redress and, and to seek compensation for the harm that you have suffered. So like I said, it's not a, it's not a competition or it's not, it's not a competition between the TRRC and the courts who should deliver justice, etc. No, it is about looking at what suits your circumstances and it is about looking at what is feasible and what is reasonable in the circumstances. As far as Nyan's case is concerned, uh, we thought that it's not necessary to wait for the TRRC to be operational and to wait for the TRRC to make recommendations about her case before we can ultimately get her redress. We think with her case it can be distinguished from many other cases involving victims in the sense that uh, there is already compensation given to some of the victims uh, in her own case. Uh, some of the victims belonging to the same transaction that led to the harm that she actually suffered. So essentially we are approaching this in fact more from a human rights perspective. We are saying that there is discrimination. There is discrimination and this is contrary to the 1997 constitution of the Gambia. It's in violation of fundamental rights and freedoms and we are saying that it is discriminatory and that it has to be found to be discriminatory by the courts and then after that the court should make an order compelling the government to also provide adequate compensation for her. This is what we are saying. This is what we are saying. Yeah. Court case, uh, maybe I need to clarify this. It's not a court case that is being brought by the victim center. Um, I had a meeting with the chairperson of the victim center, Mr. Kijera, and we thought it would be a good idea. I could have had this press briefing uh, at my chambers in Banjul, but we thought for symbolic purposes, it's a good idea to have it here um, so that we, we feel close to the victims also. But it, it is not a case that is being brought by the victim center. It is a case that is being brought by Nyan Saranjob as an individual. So essentially, she is the one who is bringing this action. So if victims of April 10 and 11 also want to get, go the same route, they would have to bring forward their own case. But uh, what I would advise is that, um, unlike Nyan's case, uh, some of the cases involving these victims require thorough investigation before certain facts can be ascertained. So it's probably advisable to wait for the investigatory authorities, uh, probably via the TRRC, to, to consummate that work before you can take it to the next step. With Nyang's case, we need not wait for that because there is already a court judgment from the ECOWAS court and the, the facts are already established. So this is why it can be distinguished from the cases involving many other victims. So, but with the rest, you will realize that if you go to court now and say that you are a victim of April 10 and 11, uh, naturally, there would be a need for some form of investigation with regards to what happened during April 10 and 11 to actually arrive uh, uh, to the bottom of the matter and to establish the truth before a decision can even be made of, of, on whether you know, victims are there and whether they are deserving of compensation, etc., etc. So it can be a fairly elaborate process. So my advice would be to wait for the TRRC, um, which is almost like a quasi-judicial body, and which has investigation powers for them to investigate some of these things, get to the bottom of it, make appropriate recommendations, and then you take it from there. And then you take it from there. Yes, and then you take it from there. Take it. So we'll take we'll take one more one more question, and then in our own domestic judicial judicial mechanisms. Uh, but now that the situation has changed, and there is there is greater respect for um, rule of law, um, there is greater respect for fundamental rights and freedoms. Uh, victims have the right to come forward and seek redress where they think it is feasible that redress would be would be would be would be would be obtained and she's Gambian 